We've got some questions on state, but we did go over state last time. So let's look at financing. So again, for anyone who's new, uh, there are four categories in the national that are important. 55 of the 80 questions will be on uh, general principles of agency, practice of real estate, financing, and contracts. So those four things are your most important categories. Uh, if you focus on those, you should be able to pass. As long as you get those questions, you can get all the other ones wrong and, and still pass. So really focus on practice of real estate, general principles of agency, financing, and contracts as far as the national portion. In the state portion, you're going to want to do license laws and rules of the Ohio Real Estate Commission and brokerage relationships. That's 30 of the 40 questions that you're going to face in the state portion. So as long as you have those locked down pretty well, you are going to do fairly well in the state portion as well. You can miss every other question if you have these two categories, you know, really locked in. I'm sorry, right. can you just repeat the state again real quick? Uh, yeah, license laws and rules of the Ohio Real Estate Commission. And the next one was brokerage relationships. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes, I can. So these two things here. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, cool. Okay. So yeah, so these two in the, in the state portion. And then, you know, practice of real estate. General principles, financing, and contracts in the national. Do those at a high level. Uh, you should have no problem with the with the exam. All right. Um, let's look at contracts. It looks like we've got some area of improvement in contracts. All right. So. Mm -hmm. A seller signs an exclusive right to sell listing agreement with the broker. However, the seller's brother-in-law makes an offer on the property the next day, not realizing it has been placed in a listing. Which statement is true? Number one. A. A, all right, I heard one and A, so. The broker is entitled to a commission. That is correct. What is the other one that would be better for the seller in that regard? Exclusive, Exclusive agency. That is correct. I apologize. Right. I'm at work. I'm still clocked in. So if you guys hear that background, I apologize. Oh, no worries. No worries. It's not, not very loud. Uh, when an offer is presented to the seller may... Number one. A. A. I am so sorry. Is it possible to make your screen bigger? I cannot read those answers. Um, I don't know how to make. Okay, maybe I can. Oh, there it goes. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Now I can't fit it all in there. There we go. <laughs> Is that still good? Yes. I Yeah, I can see. Okay. All right. So a contract is entered into on fraudulent terms introduced by the seller. Upon discovery of the fraud by the buyer, the contract would be? Voidable by the buyer. A. D. One. Number one. I mean. C. C. Void. So C or A? We've got. If only the innocent party can make it or can do the void transaction, a. whatever. One A. All right, I, I hear A is more than C, and you are correct. So yes, it would be voidable by the buyer. What is the best explanation of an option? A. Anyone else? 
A. I, want I agree. Yes. That would be correct. <laughs> All right, let's see. A seller signs an exclusive agency agreement with a broker. The day after the listing is signed, the seller's brother-in-law decides to make an offer on the property without knowing that the property has been listed. Which that statement is, is true? The broker D is not entitled to a commission. Mm, not entitled. Yeah, correct. correct. Just the opposite of the question we were asked before. Exclusive agency versus exclusive right to sell. If upon a receipt of purchase under certain terms, the seller makes a counter offer, the prospective purchaser is... D. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Everyone agree? Yes. Yes. Okay. Correct. A broker deposits a buyer's $500 earnest money check into the broker's personal checking account. The broker is guilty of commingling. Yes, commingling. Should probably mark the answer. That'll help. All right. Good job. An option. E. Is that B as in boy or D as in dog? Dog. D as in dog. As in boy. B as in boy. B E and B. 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 All right. I keep hearing B, so I'm going to go with the correct answer. Uh, yeah. Bye. So, yes, an option is a unilateral agreement. And it only makes the, uh, it, you know, the optionor has to complete the purchase if the optionee so elects. So one side gets, you know, the purchaser gets to say whether the deal goes through or not. Seller signs a listing agreement that commences today and ends on December 31st of this year. The listing agent tries as hard as possible, but simply cannot find a buyer who is interested in the property. After the first of the year, the listing is terminated by... D as in dog. Correct. An agreement of sale is a contract between... B. B as in boy. B is in boy? Yeah, seller and buyer. Yeah. Buyers. Correct. Mary buys Sally's property, which is subject to a mortgage. After five years of payment, Mary defaults and misses a payment. Which is the appropriate remedy for the original mortgage or? C. I heard C. Oh, you know what? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> this, one, this is one of them more. B. That's a dog. Okay, we got D as a dog. Oh. Because Mary is still liable. Well, Mary buys. Mary buys Sally's. I think it's B as in boy. Yeah. A B. So, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm going to keep a C. B. Maybe B. B as in boy. B. All right. So. That's C or A for me. Consensus. Yeah, it's so, C or A for me. We got C or A. <laughs> we got B. I'm back. <laughs> B. Another vote for B. It's just B. It's <laughs> from a work location. So that's, yeah, yeah, be like one. No, it's not oh. me for sure. It's C. <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. Oh, there was, yeah, there was no assumption. No assumption. So, so, again, when you read the question, Sally is the mortgagor. 
So Mary buys Sally's property and Sally is the mortgagor. So most people confuse mortgagor and mortgagee. So in this case, the mortgagee is the bank. So the question plainly states that Mary bought Sally's property, which was subject to a mortgage. It does not state that there was any loan assumption. Thus, Sally remains totally liable on the loan and cannot sue Mary. The bank, which is the mortgagee, can sue only Sally as there was no assumption. Mm -hmm. That was close. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so the mortgagor is Sally. So, you know, that's what they're saying. Sally has no recourse since there was no assumption of the loan. So why wasn't it C? Sorry. Um, can I go back? No, you can't go back in this one. In the copy cramp, you can't go back? No, nope, you got to wait to the end. I didn't, okay. it ain't going to give us the options. Uh, C was so one I of the know. ones I said, it did, it did mention assumption, but it was that, uh, oh my gosh. You could sue Sally. Right. Right. But the thing is, is if there was assumption, then Mary would be the mortgagor because Mary assumes the loan. So she is the mortgagor. So in that statement, they're asking what would the recourse be for the mortgagor or actually in that answer. So I would need to look and see what C said. I don't remember what C said. Right. We can go back. That was question 11. All right. Um, the term specified performance refers to. Legal procedure or what you there. D. D. Correct. Who is authorized to rescind a voidable contract? Best lines. The Belgium. innocent party. Oh, I think I had the dash in it. That's what it was. So, yeah. So, which one? I got it. Oh, oh, I rescind a good contract. So, which one is it? Only the minor. C. C. Only the minor. Correct. A lender qualifies a new borrower who signs a note and mortgage. Then the same terms of the note and mortgage are transferred to a new mortgagor, relieving the original mortgagor of liability. This is known as A. Assignment. Okay. Novation. Oh, oh, really? Can you read? Can you scroll down so I can read that definition? Yeah, thank oh, you. Dang. Oh, because they weren't without the relief of the lie, but got it. That's why. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I understand now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The law requiring certain real estate contracts to be in writing to be enforceable is called A. Oh, B. 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 <laughs> <There you> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's go back to question 11. Drop it. Unless you're Aaron or Janelle. We just went over it. Marked incorrect. I'm also sharing it on my screen. There we go. All right. So, how do I do it? There, you got it. You got it. Mm, so, if a customer lives in an RV, mm -hmm. well, it has to be built in a store. That's also right here. Very nice. Excellent job. 
I guess I can't go back and look at that like that. Mm. Okay. Before we move on. All right. So still a good job. You got 87% on that one. So that was contracts. Now, let's see. PowerPoint. What do you think? Financing general principles or Here we go. practice All of right. real estate? Vehicle, location, Financing. Financing. It'd only be like five questions okay, in there. Or you said that financing only have five questions? questions? Yeah, I think the top is 10. It's like a small category. Um, yeah. Four yeah, the the financing is like one of the smaller of the four. Yeah. That that. <laughs> only six, only six finance questions. What's that? Yeah, it's only six finance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So general principles or practice of real estate? Practice of real estate. Yeah. All right. Did everybody take the test already? I have. I'm no, I'm I haven't. <laughs> I have. Next I one. Have. This is not very encouraging for someone who has not tried. I have not either. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> Just know your definitions. You have to really know your definitions because it, it just gets so tricky. It's so It just be yeah. tricky. Yeah, and it's, I see you it's, have to like read the question and not assume like anything. I just learned that just by yeah, yeah. Always, yeah. Do you feel like always read the question like two or three times just because like we have been studying questions before, so you automatically think like it's this, but they didn't put if and or but in that thing so quick. You'd be like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Look, look for words like accept or not. Or, or not. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the term blockbusting refers to. Um, wait, like dog. B, like dog. Mm -hmm. A. Oh, yeah. B. D. Everybody in agreement? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. So steering is not blockbusting. So just know that those are two different terms. Um, so blockbusting is inducing homeowners to sell their property by suggesting that minorities or undesirables are moving into the neighborhood. An agent advertises a property for sale for $120,000. When any potential buyer arrives for a showing, the agent says the price has just been raised to $160,000. The agent is guilty of. False advertising. For the value of the vehicle, it's not the of a loss. So in auto, what do we refer to as value? What is the value to the auto side? So. I will say whoever is on that call, if you could mute, it is it is helpful for everyone else. Thank you. All right, um, an agent, all right, so we got that one, false advertising. Real estate agent Marge listed a property that was occupied by a tenant. The seller instructed Marge to inform the tenant that he has two weeks to vacate because the owner wants to sell the property. Marge should, and remember, Marge is the real estate agent. Advise the seller to the sell the D. D. Rating base. All right. So it's really changed blocks and shut off the utilities. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is D. All right. So yes, um, in those situations, you do not get involved. You advise them to, uh, you know, speak with an attorney because you are not there to practice law. So and never get into a situation where you're violating the law and violating that tenant's right. So you have no authority to evict tenants. Uh, so don't do that. 
Grace is the agent on the floor and receives a call from a potential buyer stating they are an executive of a company and would like to see high-end condos listed by her firm. Grace sets an appointment and shows the executive the condos. The next day, Grace receives another inquiry on the same condos. She detects an accent and presumes the caller is from West Virginia. <laughs> when the caller requests viewing appointments, Grace informs them they will first have to be pre-qualified. Of what law is Grace in violation? A. 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 Yeah, A. A. Mm, that is correct. West Virginia accent. That's an interesting one to be able to take out. <laughs> I don't know that I would be able to just say, yeah, West Virginia. Um, when buyers ask for help understanding the various ways of taking ownership, which is title, the agent should be like dog. dog. Oh, I suppose to find out how other things are. Correct. Yeah. By which system? In real estate brokers share listings and commissions on listings sold jointly. B. D. Which one? D. 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 Correct. So, what do these other ones stand for? APR for interest rate. You're right. Annual percent. percentage rate. Mm. Um, What's in my fee? Mortgage insurance premium. premium. What's PMI? Uh, insurance. Mortgage um, insurance. Private mortgage private insurance. Private mortgage insurance. Yes. So you've got annual percentage rate, mortgage insurance premium, private mortgage insurance, and then you have multiple listing service. So MLS. A listing agent notices the property they are listing needs some cosmetic attention. Rather than bother the seller with the chore of cleaning and making minor repairs, they advise the owner to list lower than market value to get a quick sale. The property is on the market for several months and now the listing agent is offering the seller a list price offer. The agent has the house cleaned and does some minor repairs. The agent sells the property at a profit of 25%. Has there been a violation? Yes. B, like boy. B is in boy? Yes. Correct. So your, your obligation is to advise for the best marketing strategy. So if you knew that you can make more money by doing a minor repair, uh, then you should always invite, advise the client of that. Jim agrees to list his cousin's property. Jim shows a buyer client several properties and the buyer client decides to make an offer on Jim's cousin's property. Jim declares dual agency. What else does he need to disclose? The relationship to the seller. B. Correct. Anytime you have a relationship or it's your property, you have to disclose that. Mark is a real estate agent with 20 years of experience in residential real estate. He gets a call from an old classmate who found him through a social internet website. The classmate asks Mark to manage their 400 unit apartment building. Mark should. Refer him to an expert, B. Yeah, I'm gonna say D. Anyone else? Yes, I agree. D. Everyone, everyone agree with D. Yes. That is correct. Agent Sarah goes to a listing appointment and convinces the seller to agree to a commission of seven percent, as this is the broker's customary rate of commission. The seller asked Sarah if she would offer 4% to the buyer's broker. 
Sarah should. Get the broker's permission. A. A. So it's, you have to follow the lawful instructions of your broker and the client. So that is correct. A real estate agent is authorized to prepare a pre-printed contract. B. Oh, wait, wait, B. wait, wait, wait. B. B as in boy. Yep. Okay, B as in boy. Correct. An advertisement in the local newspaper says that a property for rent is available only to senior citizens over the age of 55. A young couple with a child asked to see the property. They are denied access. Which law has been violated? B. C. B. C. Fair housing. D. No violation. I was going to say no violation is. <laughs> no violation is correct. Because it's. Yep. So because housing for seniors, it, as long as 80% are set aside for people over 55, um, you know, it, you're allowed to do it. So there's no, there's no violation if it's a senior living facility. They can't advertise that they only accept people over the age of 55. Abby is showing a potential renter an apartment. The renter lets Abby know they are currently in drug rehabilitation therapy for cocaine addiction. Oh. Abby should. B, boy. Yeah, B, boy. I agree. Mm -hmm. Is a boy? Yes. Correct. So yeah, they're considered disabled if they are in rehabilitation therapy. So it's the Fair Housing Act uh, and the Americans with Disability Act. Which is not a protected class under the 1968 Fair Housing Act? Hmm, age? No origin. National origin. National origin? Oh, I think it's... Mm. Age or religion or national or race? Think age. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to go with age. You would be correct. Because remember, it's it's uh, fresh corn. Familial status, race, religion, color, sex, national origin, disability. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So, age is not one of them. A potential buyer asks an agent whether a general warranty deed or a quick claim deed is better. Which is the appropriate response from the agent? D. D. Like dog. Dog. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And and did everybody does everybody know fresh corn for the sixty eight Fair Housing Act? No. no. Mm -mm. So fresh corn is the acronym for familial status, race, ethnic background, sex, handicap, color, origin, religion, and nationality. Geez, I'm gonna have to go back and do that. Write that one. That's what I was writing down. That's the first time I heard that one. Yes. Yeah, one, one more time. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. I'll put it in the chat. Hang on. Okay. Fresh corn. That's race. Color. <clears throat> So that's an easy acronym to remember the 68 Fair Housing Act on who is and what is and what isn't included.
All right. All right. Good job. Did you put it up on the board or no? Because I didn't see it. Uh, it's in the chat. Do you see it? No. In the in the actual Zoom chat. Oh, well then. Everybody see it? Yep. Yes. Yeah, I know you can. So you're. I'm just be started. <laughs> <laughs> that was from TikTok. You gotta hit that, hit them, uh, that little more <laughs> button on your um Zoom screen, and then hit say, I'm, I'm just sort of learning Zoom. So. Yeah, the chat button looks like a, a little like speech window in a comic. Okay. Oh, I think I. Let's see if that's it. All right, got it. Okay. All right. Let's jump into this one. We're moving along pretty quickly today. All right. The person authorized to act in place of someone else in legal matters is called a POA. Oh. Everybody jumped on that one pretty quick. <laughs> it's an attorney in fact. I was going to say, I, so, yeah. I miss that question every time I take this. <laughs> yeah. So the person designated under a power attorney to act on another's behalf is called the attorney in fact. So. Okay. An agent is one who A Correct. Which is the best example of a general agent? A A Correct. A sales agent is selling his own personal home, the condition of which he misrepresents. What do people think of um, the agent is sued and raises the definition, the wait, defense wait, 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 that he was not able to hear on this call. I think it's Benita. Are you able to mute? <laughs> the sales agent is selling his own personal home, the condition of which he misrepresents. The agent is sued and raises the defense that he was not acting as an agent in the sale, but was selling his own property personally. The probable outcome of the case is the, and I accidentally hit See? one, so. Like it. See? It would be held liable. Uh, yeah. Oh. I think B or C? C. No, I think it's B. Both, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sales so, agent will be held liable. So, you know, remember, like I've said before, you're a real estate agent 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So you cannot say, you know, you cannot go and say that you're not an agent or not acting as an agent. You are always an agent. An agency relationship created through a listing contract can be terminated by the seller's death or broker's death. Everyone agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Correct. A sales agent has a duty to treat all parties to a transaction honestly and fairly. Oh, oh. I, I got trash. Here you go. I mean, it's just very good hearing this, man. It's off the ceiling. <laughs> you just crap out of me just now. Still on the call. Appreciate you. 
All right. Uh, what what everybody pick? A. 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 In all transactions. That is correct. A person authorized to act on behalf of another is called a. D. Correct. A relationship between one person, principal, and another, agent, wherein the agent is given the right to act on behalf of the principal in a business setting is usually called? C. C. Correct. During a 90-day listing agreement, the seller dies. Which statement is true? It's terminated. Correct. One who acts or has the power to act for another is termed the? Agent. Agent. You sensing a theme here? <laughs> All right. So the only one you missed was the uh, agency, uh, first agency question. Power of attorney. Attorney in fact. Yep, your attorney in fact was the correct answer. All right. We've got time, so let's let's burn through one of these. So license laws, I think people have yes. more trouble with this one. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Which of the following is not a management level licensee? A new salesperson. Hey. Under the Ohio Real Estate Recovery Fund, the commission shall impose a special fee not to exceed $10 annually on each license filing a notice of renewal if the recovery fund is less than $500,000. $500, Correct. When must a broker record a written release or satisfaction of the broker lien in the county recorder's office in which the lien was recorded? 10 days. And Everybody agree with 10 days? 10 days going once, 10 days going twice. I see some head nods, so I'm gonna go with it. Correct. Homosexuality is protected under what federally protected class? A. A. Correct. So local ordinances are have it, but it's not protected. It's not a protected class. From where does the real estate licensee get the 19 articles of the canons of ethics? Real estate commission. Ooh, that's an interesting one. That's correct. Good job. A broker receives an earnest money payment. The broker deposits the earnest money in his trust account. By law, what is the amount of interest a broker may bear on his on this trust account? Zero percent. Really? Which is it? Zero? Zero I heard zero. Everybody agree? Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah, brokers not allowed to bear any interest on their trust account. Now, property management accounts are different, but brokerage accounts otherwise are, are not. Which of the following grants the broker the exclusive right to represent the purchaser in the purchaser lease of property? B, as in dog. Exclusive purchaser agency agreement. Correct. 
A buyer makes an offer to buy a house and faxes the offer to the seller in another state. The seller, upon receipt, signs the offer, intending to mail it back to the buyer the next morning. In the meantime, the buyer telephones the seller and withdraws the offer. What is true? There's no contract that accepts it's been delivered. C. So C? Yeah. Correct. A broker receives a client's earnest money check and deposits it into his trust account. Prior to the closing, however, the broker needs money to pay monthly overhead expenses. He borrows some money from the trust account, fully intending to replace it before the closing. The broker is guilty of... Conversion. Conversion. Right. Good job. The principal broker has the following duties except... Prepare listing agreements. Prepare listing agreements. Correct. A person making an application to the recovery fund for payment must file an application to recover within... One year. I only heard one one year. Everybody agree or do we not know this one? Agreed. No. I agree by you. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So here's the, the rationale. Person making an application may not make such application more than one year after termination of all proceedings in connection with the judgment received, including appeals. So if you're making an application to recovery fund for payment, you must do it within one year after termination. After recording an affidavit of lien with the recorder's office, the broker shall provide a copy of the lien affidavit where a contract for sale or other conveyance of the lien property has been entered into to the... It's loaded. B. B. Light boy. We are sure. Correct. A buyer makes an offer to purchase a house oh, and gives the seller until midnight, three days hence, to accept the offer. Prior to acceptance, the buyer withdraws the offer. What is true? C. Do you like that? Yeah, I it. Correct. On a side note, I just actually got a client for my team for that exact reason. He reached out to me and apparently he didn't want to continue with his offer that he had made. Uh, and he was hoping that the seller would not take his offer. And I said, well, if they haven't accepted it, you can back out. And he was like, my agent never told me that. So make sure you're communicating with your clients on what their options are and know what their needs are as well. Mm -hmm. Because he was hoping the seller would turn not do the offer. And I was like, well, if the seller accepted, you would have to pay earnest money. I was like, you're not on the So make sure you're educating your client. That is your job. So an agent wishes to specialize in the sales of commercial property. What should they do? Choose best answer. This question was on the Stay test. Stay with the same broker. See. Mm, yeah. So this question was on the test, you said? Yes, and I was confused. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't need a special license or anything additional to sell commercial property, so you just stick with the same agent. Hey. Everybody in agreement? Yes. Correct. Um, oh, and a caveat to what I just said about that person switching agents. Um, they reached out to me. You cannot solicit other people. And I also told them that they should talk to their agent. Um, at no point did I offer my services. I just gave them advice on the questions they asked me about.
So make sure you're following ethical rules when you talk to people. You can answer their questions. What they do with that is up to them. You cannot solicit them if they are actively signed with another agent. They can terminate their agreement. You can't ask for them to. Okay. Which of the following is a violation of license law? Okay. Okay. Heard a couple A's, we all in agreement? A. Correct. What is the maximum number of DBA names a broker is allowed to operate under? Five. No more than five, yeah. Correct. If the superintendent pays any amount from the recovery fund in settlement of a claim towards the satisfaction of a judgment against a licensed broker or salesperson, it's automatically revoked. A. Suspended. Correct. For a minimum of how many years must a broker keep records? Three. 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 If given the choice, what type of listing agreement would a seller probably prefer? Exclusive right. E. Yeah. Exclusive agency. Yeah, A. A. Everybody agree with that? Yes, I agree. That is correct. The principal broker has the following duties except. The fair listing agreements. I was going to say, you guys already answered this question once. Yeah. All right. So we're at 6.53. I don't know that we'll have time to get through another one. Uh, uh, any questions, uh, concerns, or comments for the greater good of the group? Good job, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great job. You guys did a great job on this one. You've got almost all of them right. It's going to feel real good when that's my test. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if, only, if only you could take the test as a group, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what percentage should I be aiming for for the um, practice test, like in CopyGram? Like, are we like high, like 90? Should I be like 70? I would, I would say as long right? as you're getting over 90. Okay. Yeah. You know, try and get as high as you can, but... <laughs> I, I felt pretty comfortable where when I was getting over 90s every time, every time I took it, you know, because you're, you're. And that was the big really, practice one at the end? What's that? There's a, um, like in copy care, you know how you take your pre-test and then there's like a post-test after you do all of the studying and in between. On that test, like what score should I be aiming for to let me know that I'm ready to sit for the actual exam? Uh, I would say, you know, again, 70 is passing. 70, you know, 71%, 70% is passing. So, you know, if you're hitting 90, if you're hitting high 80s, you should be okay. Um, but the, the real thing is, is look at which questions you're getting wrong mm -hmm. and, you know, make sure that you're really strong in those categories of, you know, high question numbers, you know, the practice, uh, real estate, general principles, contracts, finances, those are going to be the majority of your questions. Everything else you can kind of get wrong. So if you have some of the other ones, it'll make up for you missing a couple in those. Um, mm -hmm. But as long as you're, you're really strong on those areas, you should be fine. Um, but again, just look at what you're missing and mm -hmm. 
and figure out, hey, you know, where where is my deficit? Where is my gap? And then, mm -hmm. then work to close that gap, you know. And, okay. and if you do that, you should be fine on the test. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does KW have a discount code for um, CompuCrime? <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, we, we offer the discount code, although I don't know, hang on, I, maybe this still works, uh, I don't know if it will, but hang on just a second, let me see something. I, I say, think I've seen one on the website that was like SEP20, like, uh, yeah. SEPT20, I believe, I don't know if that's still valid though. Yeah, it's, that one is still valid, I'm looking for another one. <laughs> no, I, just, I don't think we. I don't think we have anything that would would actually work uh, better than that. How um, much is the cramp run about? How much is what? How much does the county cramp run? I think it's one fifty. Yeah, something like that. It's one hundred five, and then there's a twenty percent discount that they have going right now until the thirtieth. Okay. Oh, you want to make sure that you do both the national and the state portion, because I think they are set at different prices. Oh, okay, noted. Yeah, the total for both is um, it's about, with the discount, I think it's about 86 It came up to about 86 or $87. Um, yeah, I think before taxes, mine was like 79 so that makes sense. Okay. Oh, I thought it was way more than that, so maybe I'll just go ahead and... Get it because I'm halfway. I did Davis College. I'm halfway through, but still don't know. When we go on the CompuCramp, I don't know many of the answers. So figured it might probably benefit me. And and the thing about that, I used CompuCram when I took my exam, and it and the ability to just keep taking the test over and over again and do their like vocabulary assessments and all that stuff. Um, I would take their like little test over and over again. Um, and then you can do like a full simulated exam, you know, so, That's you know, good. then you can do like, you know, full exams and we can, we can work on that one next time. But again, you need a lot of time for that. You know, it's like 180 minutes to complete that when you do a, a full simulated exam. Um, so. Did you, are you able, did you say you found, was there something you emailed us to see if we can get the discount for CompuCrit? Oh. I didn't, but hang on, I can, I can see if I can. Now, does it matter? Because I did Davis, so does it matter what you go through for it? Or it just no, comes? I mean, oh. you're, you're buying a product, you know. Okay. So, you know, you're just buying a product. Let's see. So again, I don't know if this will work, uh, but here you go. Uh, that hey. password shouldn't be a part of that. Question, if a broker relocates, what must they do? Because I, I can't seem to find that in the, in the book. They if need to broker, update it with the... With the division? The division of real estate? Yeah. Okay. So any changes have to be made through the division. So okay. if you were if you were to change brokerages, anything like that, um, it has to be done through the division. Okay. And I had one more question. If if I was if I couldn't get in contact with another agent to put in an offer, so another agent from another brokerage, what would I do? I believe I had answered that I would mail the offer. You reach what? out to the broker. Re reach out to the broker. Okay. I mean, that's, again, um, that's the practical right. in, in real world <laughs> thing that you would do. Yeah, um, that was an option, though. I remember that was an option. That was an option? Mm hmm Yeah. So you would reach out to the broker. If you can't reach an agent... Um, you know, you reach out to the broker because the broker is the one who's holding the agreement. Mm -hmm. And so an agent 
can, and, and I've had to do that several times. Okay. So, you know, like I said, in real world application, that's what you do. You okay. reach out to the broker. Any other questions? I have a question. This is probably out there, but is there like a vocabulary test? Like I know definitions, but like I've been trying to learn how to spell all these words I never knew. Do I have to even spend time doing that? As long as I know no, the definitions. Is that there, there's there's no like written in answers, if I recall. Yeah, that you have. No it's all it's multiple choice. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to, you know, be able to spell everything. Not that I can't spell, but some of these words, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like I went through the whole glossary trying to spell all the words and learn the definitions. Mm -hmm. Real Estate Wizard is really good. I sent it to the group. Um, real Estate Wizard. Yeah, Real Estate Wizard. Yeah, flashcards, vocabulary, and practice tests, too. That one guy last week had mentioned um... Uh-huh. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, that was okay. I was listening to that the was podcast. Okay. That was okay. It felt, yeah. felt like it's it more didn't hit. Focused, though. Mm -hmm. It didn't really hit all the points. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. He also passed. He, okay. He's an agent. <laughs> he's an agent. <laughs> I bet he did. <laughs> so I is, the national the wizard real estate wizard was really helpful though the national i passed was at 88 percent, but i missed the state by four points so mm -hmm. so they first i missed the national by one point <gasps> oh my god <laughs> one point oh. I'm not <laughs> so i just I just onboarded a gentleman a couple weeks ago First time he missed it by two, second time he missed it by one, and I was like, "Well, you got it the next time," and he sure did. He made it. So. <laughs> oh, that's hurtful. That how, is hurtful. like if you don't pass the test, how soon can you take it again? Uh, yeah, oh. pretty quickly. Just okay. get your retake application sent back in, and then they'll, you know, they uh, you can reschedule right after that, like. You know, you as long as they have the them. results, uh, they'll the division will get you set up, and you can re you know reschedule yeah. the next day once your application has been submitted. I got you. How much is that retake application? Same eighty one dollars. Eighty one. Eighty one dollars every time. I I just have to pay it, and and here and here's a, a reason not to do a proctored exam. We had a water main break here at the office. My wife was at home taking her exam. I walked in on the phone talking. Oh. They cut her off for cheating. <gasps> oh, oh, no. She yeah. was angry. <laughs> <laughs> I know she and, was. Uh, yeah, so she was not happy because she had studied, she had gotten ready, and she had spent oh, like three, uh, three full days before it, like prepping, getting ready. I walked in. She wasn't expecting me to be there. I wasn't supposed to be home. I was talking. I was on a Zoom meeting on my phone. And uh, they said they gave her like 16 seconds. She yelled at me. And then, but yeah, because but because it was communication, they instantly cut it off and canceled her for cheating. Uh, so, so that doesn't, that doesn't it, affect her though. Like literally, it's just, she just has to pay for it all. She just has to retake. Yeah, I just have oh, to yeah. send in okay. money like, for a retake. You know, she uh, and so <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she she got uh she got a retake and so now we're in the process of doing all that. So yeah. Okay. Oh you owe her flowers. <laughs> Let's say did you get her flowers? I, I, I owe that woman $81. way more than flowers. She deals with me on the <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. Uh so uh -huh. yeah so so uh, and and I learned a lot about proctored exams because after I messed up her test, I was on the phone with PSI for hours, uh, going over like, "Hey, what can we do? How can we fix this?" You know, and um, they told me that be really careful if you do proctored because they've cut people off for someone cutting the grass next door, for oh dog barking, for doorbells ringing, 
like all those things. You're better off at a test site. <laughs> you're better off at a test site because yeah. any of those things that can happen that are out of your control will instantly get you kicked out and you've you've wasted your your $65 for the test and your $81 for the application. Yeah, wow. thanks for telling me that because I was almost ready to sit in my hammock and take my test. <laughs> oh, no. no. It, oh. If, if your neighbor, if somebody comes up and says something, it just within shot, they have those uh, little decibel uh, things that monitor sound. If anything loud happens near you, they can cut you off for that loud noise. Mm -hmm. Noted. Don't even chance it. Yeah. Yep. It's not worth it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, did you go you to put, the testing site, take your test. Did you put the CompuCramp link in the group chat or what did you send it 